Funding for this program comes from Partners in Financial Planning, a Southwest Virginia-based financial management firm, partnersinfinancialplanning.com. Woods Rogers Attorneys at Law, committed to helping clients navigate what lies ahead and to creating a diverse, equitable, and inclusive workplace where everyone works towards a common goal with the benefit of seeing the path forward differently, woodsrogers.com. The Community Foundation of the New River Valley, Investing in our community now and for future generations by encouraging charitable giving, supporting innovative programs, and nurturing collaboration, cfnrv.org, with additional support from the American Advertising Federation of Roanoke and the Virginia Film Office. They're not the rich and famous. Their profit comes not from the thing they sell, but the good they do. Our nation has more than 1.5 million nonprofits that employ one out of 10 Americans, providing services that otherwise go unfulfilled, keeping our community connected when all else fails. But nonprofits often lack the tools to properly promote themselves, to inspire more donors and volunteers and clients to their cause. That's where I come in. I've been in the nonprofit world for nearly 20 years. I connect nonprofits with marketing professionals who donate their time and expertise so that, at the end of the day, these life-giving organizations can do more, do better, by creating more, that's right, buzz. In part one of our special two-part episode on the Christiansburg Institute, we learned about the school's incredible 100-year history of educating black Americans in spite of just as incredible odds. We also learned about the nonprofit that was created to preserve and build upon its legacy. Today on part two, I'm excited to meet some alumni who were fortunate to have attended the school, plus others who really wish they could have all as they work to share the story of Christiansburg Institute's past, present, and future, both with a national audience through a new website we're helping provide, and locally through some incredible community organizing, highlighted by Juneteenth. So my name is Debbie Sherman Lee. I am the chair of Christiansburg Institute, Inc. I was able to go to Christiansburg Institute for one year, um, my eighth grade year in 19... Uh, 65, 66. I'm, I'm Bob Lees from Parisburg, Virginia. I graduated in the class of 1948. I was president of the class and I was also president of the student uh, body at the time. Hello, my name is Jesse Eves. I graduated the class of 1965. I'm a proud tiger. Uh, uh, the tiger was our mascot and our colors were green and gold. And I'm very proud of our school, very proud of all of its accomplishments. Okay, my name is Walter Price. Uh, I went to CIA from 1959 to 1964. My name is Shirley Johnson Akers, and I would have been a graduate of Christiansburg Industrial Institute in the year 1973. Okay, my name is Alan W. Palmer. I graduated from CI in 1961. I was born and raised here in Christianburg, Virginia. Hi, my name is Karen Jones. I am the granddaughter of James Ed Jones Sr. Um, and Barbara Natalie Morgan Jones, who are graduates of Christiansburg Institute. My aunt, Sandra Dooley, graduated from Christiansburg Institute. And um, my aunt, Patricia Jones, and my dad, um, James Jones Jr. all attended um, either Friends Elementary or um, Christiansburg Institute. I am Kenneth B. Wright. I graduated in 1959 from Christiansburg Institute. So today we're sitting in the Hill School Community Center and this is actually a really special place to me. It was built um, in 1866 um, as really the first um, building for what would become Christiansburg Institute. Um, so at its core, it has always been a center of our community and education has always been a piece of that. Um, so it's just this really 
phenomenal place that when you walk into it, you know that you're kind of walking in the footsteps of greatness. We, we only went to 10 grades in Parisburg and the, the county wouldn't pay for blacks getting an education beyond the 10th grade. Well, in those days, you needed 11 grades in order to get your diploma. So most of the students there who needed, uh, who wanted to go to college, went to either Genoa in uh, Bluefield, West Virginia, or Lucy Addison in Roanoke, or CII. I was rather small, but I wanted to be part of the football team. So uh, my eighth grade year, I started as a trainer, uh, manager of the football team. And all I did was, you know, get water for them. And on Thursday nights, I'd take the football cleats of a couple of players and take them home, shine them up, <laughs> and bring them back for Friday's game. And uh, I did that. and. I, uh, I used that as a crutch. All the girls thought I was playing football. <laughs> and they'd ask me, well, we didn't see you on the field. I said, well, I've been injured, you know, because I had a jersey and everything. <laughs> My first memory of CI was the marching band. Seeing the drum majors and the long striding steps and the band and, and this the jovial community that that marching band had. Um, a lot of the teachers taught things that my sisters would bring home and show me. Um, they had classes in sewing. They, they made hats. I'm not talking about this, the little cap. They made actual beautiful hats that they sell in the stores now, two, three, four hundred dollars. And this was skills that they bought home and showed me and skills that I wanted to learn also. You know, we had home ec at Christiansburg High School, but it was nowhere close to what we had at Christiansburg Institute. I was a member of the forensic club. I was Miss Cheerleader, finished fourth in my class. Um, we had lots of activities. Love my teachers. We had great teachers. Had Mr. Carr for biology and Mr. Holmes for government. Uh, Miss Clemens for English. Miss Charlton for French. But one of the things I remember about my French class was Miss Charlton used to always tell me. Jessie Eves, you cannot look pretty and speak French. So she would say, say, parlez-vous Francais. And, uh, and she said, and you have to tear up that face when you say it. I was also the pump house boy. After one o'clock lunch, I had to go over the hill about a mile, mile and a half, and turn the pump, turn the pump on. About 12 o'clock uh, that night, I had to go over the hill and turn the pump off. Okay, and what made that outstanding was that now I'm coming back from the pump house at 12 o'clock, turning the pump off, but I had to get up at four to get my furnaces going. And that was back in the days when you used the shovel and the shovel, the shovel the coal and all that. Because you see, the girl they had breakfast at seven o'clock, and you can't have those girls getting up there in the morning in the cold. <laughs> Well, we had classes like chemistry, physics, um, industrial arts, bricklaying, carpentering, barbering, um, mathematics, of course, algebra. Which, uh, mathematics, I was, uh, I was very, very poor at <laughs> mathematics, but I enjoyed, of course, the, uh, the, the, the liberal arts uh, uh, seemed to have attracted me. The fellowship the discipline, respect, those are the things I enjoyed, took from CI. You had respect for your teachers, your fellow band, your fellow classmates. Christiansburg Institute was like a junior college, I guess. We had different buildings when I was there. We had the Home Economics Building. Ms. Chappelle was our teacher. So we had uh, cooking classes, we had first aid classes, we had sewing classes in that one building. And in the next building over from the Home Economics Building was the Barbering Building and the Cosmetology Building. Uh, Mr. Graves taught the, cos taught the Barbering class and um, Miss Amanda Dehart taught Cosmetology. You, learn, you, you learned to work hard. I mean, everything that you uh, were, were faced with 
you know, when, 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 um, when the problems appeared, instead of backing down, you stepped up. And the guys went in one side of the building, the girls went in the other side. We expected to be there on time. You didn't allow the gag in between classes because sometimes you had to go from the gym, which had classrooms in it, over to the long building. They expected a lot of light out of you back in the day. You know, you, you're supposed to be a gentleman, you know, and, and they expect you to rip and run up and down the hallways and stuff. Some people did, you know, but they, they were disciplined for it. But other than that, that you know, it, I can truly say it was, it was a good school. And uh, when you left there, you were prepared for just about anything you wanted to do, I thought. Did you and your classmates at CI miss CI? Yes. Yes, definitely miss CI. Because we knew, again, we knew that um, we had to do the work, but we knew that the teachers cared. Um, they took it up a level, they, they cared, but again, they were strict. They wanted us to be able to be able to support a family. Every day I wish I went to Christiansburg Institute. It was a dream of mine. That was the one thing that I truly wanted to do because I wanted that education, I wanted that training, I wanted that connection that my sisters had and my father and them had at that school because it's not like you're just going to attend and nobody knows who you are. You know, there's a little thing out there, go where everybody knows your name. Well, there they knew your name, they knew your family, they knew your history. So it really would have meant a lot to been able to attend uh, CII. I miss that I didn't have the opportunity to kind of create those lifelong memories and lifelong bonds um, with a lot of folks. Even though I knew what the purpose of the integration was, I just thought that it was, um, it was, it was unfortunate that the integration couldn't have worked in the up opposite direction for us. Um, that, that the whites could have been integrated with us because we had the better school. I was hoping they would put some money into the school and, and to maintain the school. But after integration, I don't think the counties were willing to put the money into it. They just, it was, the, well, the integration came in and it was a different, it was a different ball game. When they integrated schools, that should have been the school that should have, that's where they should have gone because it had, had so much potential, it had everything there, you know. We had the newest gym, you know, and plenty of room for everybody. It wasn't overcrowded or anything. I wish that they had left us alone. I, I, I hate to say this, I know integration supposedly was supposed to be this great thing, but when I saw integration with me going to Christiansburg High School, I saw a lot of the young men that I would have graduated with being kicked out of school, being expelled, being uh, put in you know other classes or whatever, and set on the path for failure. And that's what I saw. So, you know, the education that you got there was great. You can look at the doctors, the lawyers, the preachers, the teachers that came out of CI. And I know there they came out with great things also, but it's just, like I said, it was just the love that they had for us that really propelled us. And we would have been still supporting that school. So uh, when they did the desegregation, uh, it was hard. Um, to keep up with everyone because we couldn't see everyone. So when you came to CI, everybody was just there from all over Pulaski, Radford, Giles, Withville, all over uh, the New River Valley and beyond. So the experience at Christiansburg High School was different. I think being one of only a few black students definitely makes a difference. Um, I know from, you know, kindergarten through at least the eighth grade. For the majority of the time, I would be the only black student in my class. I don't think they um, get, for the most part, gave the, the black students enough credit as to what they could do. You know, you were always put in, probably in um, 
the lower classes. Going to an integrated school was very hard. Um, the reason it was hard was because I was always the only African-American person in my class. You were looked at as if you were beneath any and everybody else or that you weren't as smart. I'll phrase it like that. They didn't think that I had the intelligence to strive and to grow and to mature and become, you know, what the people at Christiansburg Institute had always acknowledged that we could be, be the top, be the top. It's worth preserving today, the history is worth preserving today because it presents a mindset of, of resilience to, um, to oppression. Uh, but what little bit we have left, I'd, I'd like to see it preserved and, and, and serve as a museum piece, if nothing else. But, uh, you know, because of the, the history behind it. Because if it wasn't for CI, I, we probably wouldn't have any formal education, so to speak. Most, most of the little schools that they had, they only went to about the seventh grade, I think. I would like for them to know about the pageantry, the pomp and circumstance, the pride, um, the degree of education strength that we received from the teachers that were there at that school. Um, they were all just awesome teachers and, and for they know your family, they made sure that you were gonna be an awesome person and graduate coming out of that school. It's just really important that we maintain our history um, and tell it the way that we know that it needs to be told and understood. Um, and I feel like, and I, I firmly believe that um, if I don't do that, if I don't show like a passion for that, then others may not either. And so definitely being from the community, Christiansburg is my home. So how could I not want to make sure that this goes on forever? Above and beyond uh, the building, I believe that uh, we need to spend more time on helping to get the story, the story of, of, of resilience, the story of, of excellence, and the story of fair treatment among, among uh, uh, human beings. But I think being able to preserve what went on and how people were impacted, how their souls were enriched, uh, is far more important than, than preserving a building and the land. Although it, it hurts me not to see it intact. But I think if some other things will come out of it that will be far more valuable and impactful. You know, so it, 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 was a, it was a place to be remembered. It really is. Yeah, and uh, I, I tell you, <laughs> excuse me, I really get filled up thinking about it. It means that much to me. It really does. Why? It's, I had fun there. I learned. I learned how to deal with other people. I know when I went to the military, uh, it was easy for me because I knew how to deal with other people. You know, it wasn't the same people all the time, you know. so. It, it's, it's really squared you up for, for life. And that really means a lot. I apologize. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's to the heart.
built in 1927. Mm -hmm. The school closed in 1966. Uh, gradually over those decades, mm -hmm. the current owner of the property and the buildings, which was the Montgomery County Public School Board, they began to gradually neglect a majority of the buildings. This was one of them. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, today's call is a project check-in of the Christiansburg Institute website redesign project. Uh, and today we've got myself, William Nelms. Michael Crankton is uh, serving uh, on the project as the UX and visual designer. Um, he is uh, leading the direction uh, of the design and visual elements of the website and understanding the goals and objectives of this new site. At the bottom of every page is one of the most important aspects of the site, and that is to provide a way for the users to get in touch with the Christiansburg Institute. And then up at the top, have a call to action for donate. So they can always go and donate and help support what the Christiansburg Institute does. Chris and Michael, thank you all for allowing us to be a part of this important effort. Um, and we were just excited to be able to uh, help you all tell your story online. Um, and so we're looking forward to seeing, you know, the, the success it brings um, and, uh, you know, excited to see all the, the good things that CI continues to do. Let's get it. Thank you all at Spectrum. Absolutely. Love it. Hey, and I just want to thank everyone for coming together. Uh, William and Michael Craighead with Spectrum, I want to thank you all for donating all of your time and talent to helping Christiansburg Institute. And I'm really excited to see the launch of all this come Juneteenth. It's going to be a great day. Hello, my name is Marlene Peterson, and my great-grandfather, Edgar A. Long, ran this school uh, for 27 years. My name is Betty Jean Bull. My great-grandmother, Letitia Rollins, um, attended Christiansburg Institute in the 1890s and early 1900s. And our grandmothers yes. were best friends. Right. And grandfathers. Yes. yes. And that's how we became friends. <laughs> yes. My name is Glenn Holmes. I come from a long tradition of educators, two of whom taught here at Christiansburg Industrial Institute. I had teachers here that were airplane pilots. They built their own planes, they flew their own planes. They were noteworthy mathematicians, the scientists, and had the respect of generations of students. And to be stripped of all of that, in the name of improvement was a little difficult to accept. event. We want to welcome everybody who maybe just arrived late, uh, but we do have a really, really special announcement. For those of you that don't know, uh, Christiansburg Institute is a nonprofit, and we work very, very closely in partnership with the uh, Hill School Community Center and the Christiansburg Institute Alumni Association. Uh, together, the coalition, we've hosted our second annual Juneteenth right here at the historic footprint of the Christiansburg Industrial Institute. However, there is someone I would like for you all to meet. Um, his name is Michael Hemphill, and he has been working very closely with our organization for six months now to do some really powerful work to cover our nonprofit uh, and the impact we have in the region, and then also the incredible, incredible story of CI and the historic Edgar A. Long building. So I do want to welcome Michael to the microphone. Let's give it up for Michael. Thank you very much. Yeah, everybody, my name is Michael Hemphill, and it's my privilege to be the creator and host of a TV show that airs on PBS called Buzz. 
And each episode of Buzz features a nonprofit organization and the great work that it does in the community it serves. And I can't think of a better nonprofit than the Christiansburg Institute. It's been my privilege to walk alongside and learn from these last six months. Part of the show is we bring in a marketing company that helps the nonprofits do more and do better and achieve more Buzz. Spectrum Media Solutions has created a brand new website that they have donated to Christiansburg Institute. And at this time, I would love for you all to pull out your phones and go to Christiansburg Institute so you can see this new website, which is spectacular. It's a great venue to learn about CI's past, present, and future, and its future is just as promising as its past. Uh, if you are so inclined, and I would say please feel inclined, uh, go back up to the top of the page, and there are two little bars in the corner. Tap on those, and you will see a big, beautiful donate button. Okay? Yeah. All right, so go ahead, tap that donate button, and make a charitable contribution to the Christiansburg Institute so that it can continue to do the great work that it is doing in this community. Again, I want to thank everyone up here for allowing me to walk alongside you guys and learn more about the fabulous work that Christiansburg Institute is doing both here in our county, in our region, and really in our country. And thank you all so much again.